Now moving on to our last our last segment. I thought I, I said, you know, let's let's think about trades. Everyone likes the offseason, everyone likes big moves. So I said let's come up with two trades uh, that we could see happening. So I'll let you do one trade, then I'll do one. And vice okay. Versa. The first one I'm gonna go with is a little bit more of an obvious one. It's for Ben Simmons because I think that I do think that he will get traded this offseason. And I feel like there's a few options. Obviously, Portland gets thrown out there a lot, like Ben Simmons for CJ McCollum. And I don't think that's a bad trade for either team. But the trade that I – I honestly hate this trade. I'm not going to lie. I don't like it really for either team. But I think that they're going to trade Ben Simmons to the Warriors for Andrew Wiggins and both of the Warriors' first-round picks. And then the Sixers are going to try to move – either Andrew Wiggins of both those picks or just both the picks and then try to improve because they could draft Corey Kisper out of Gonzaga, who's a dead eye three point shooter and then trade the other one and try to get some more depth somewhere. And I'm going to be honest, I hate this for the Warriors. I do not want to see Draymond Green and Ben Simmons <laughs> playing on the same team. They might be the most locked down defensive duo of all time, but well, neither have, of them can shoot, and you, it's just waiting for a disaster. Well, when you have honest. when you have Steph Curry in there, who's obviously best shooter in the league, and then Klay Thompson, who I don't think is going to return to 100. percent I'm a little afraid because I, I I was telling you earlier before the show that I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't ever wish this upon somebody, but I wouldn't be surprised if Klay got injured again because two times in a row that's 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 tough right there. Same injury, but if you have the best shooters, why not have the best two of the better defenders? In the league, what's wrong with that? I just think their overall their overall spacing is just not going to be there because you can have, you know, that you can have Steph Curry and Klay Thompson all you want, but realistically, if two of your players have to stay inside the paint because they can't shoot at all, I mean, we kind of saw it uh, back when they had Kevin Durant and they had KD, Clay, and Steph, but when they had uh, Draymond and a center on the floor and they played the Rockets, the Rockets pretty much just guarded those three guys. And they kind of just left the other two open to shoot, and they almost won the series. And I think that is just going to get exacerbated if they have two even worse shooters now because Draymond Green's even worse than he was before, and Ben Simmons, who we all know his problems with shooting. And then they don't have Kevin Durant anymore. Yeah. So I just – I mean, I don't have a lot of confidence in the Warriors' future anyway, so I, Ben Simmons could be a building block for the future if they see him that way. But I don't think for winning now sakes, I don't – I don't think that it works as a good Yeah, thing. I get that. So first of all, I want to say sorry, Facts, and I know you're probably crying because he just said the Warriors don't have a future. So again, we're sorry about that. But uh, a possible trade I have is also for Ben Simmons, and we do see the Ben Simmons for CJ McCollum a lot. But something I want to kind of look at is let's look at the, the Sixers and the Wizards. All right, the Sixers obviously receive uh, Bradley Beal, all right? And then the Wizards will receive Ben Simmons, Tyrese Maxey, who's proven to be a really quality uh, young guy, decent point guard. And then pick number 28 for this year, a 2023 first rounder, and then a second round pick this year as well. And I think that'd be great. I, you know, I was looking at the the, the Blazers and then the, the the Sixers, and I was looking. Well, maybe the Blazers might want to get Tyrese Maxey uh, in there in the in the trade too. But the Sixers probably don't want to give him up, right? Because he's a point guard and CJ McCollum isn't necessarily that point guard right there. But when you look at Bradley Beal, he's better than CJ McCollum and he can control the ball. And so I think Bradley Beal would be able to help that team significantly. And then the Wizards get a pretty decent haul, maybe not the first round picks they're looking at, but two quality young guys. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't mind that trade at all for either team. I mean, I think that's a great trade for the Sixers. The only thing I'd be concerned about if I'm the Wizards is, again, you have Russell Westbrook on your team with Ben Simmons and obviously neither of them can space the floor. But right now, the Wizards... I mean, if they're trading away Bradley Beal, they're not looking to compete right now anyway. So I think getting the most talent on your team as possible is definitely the way forward. And I think unless they can get like a top five draft pick for Bradley Beal, which I don't think is going to happen, then I think that getting Ben Simmons is probably the best that you're going to be able to get if well, you're the Wizards. Well, bringing that up, right, looking for a top five pick, maybe Toronto with throw pick number four in there. They're, they're somewhat of a decent team with, uh, you know, they have, Pascal Siakam in there, Fred Van Vliet, the, the greatest point guard of all time on that team. They have a solid squad, though. And uh, So another trade that I was thinking about doing my last trade right now are between, the OK, with, is, are between OKC and the Mavericks. And it's between two guys with a pretty big uh, cap casualty on the team, you could say, in a way. OKC would receive, uh, receive Porzingis, and they would receive a 2025 first rounder because this, this contract for Porzingis is obviously a lot longer, locked in for a lot longer than the Mavs. And then, or then Kemba Walker. And then the Mavs would receive Kemba Walker in the second round, pick 55, second round pick this year. And I think it's kind of a switch up of the teams where they both have pretty bad contracts. 
uh, attached to them, but Kimba Walker can kind of help, you know, Luka Doncic kind of control, control the ball more. And if you don't remember, the Mavericks are one of the teams that were heavily pursuing Kimba Walker during free agency. So I think they can get Kemba Walker and move off of that terrible contract of Porzingis as a win for them, while OKC would land a guy who, if he develops correctly, he can be a really quality stretch for. Yeah, as as Matson knows, I'm an OKC fan. I would love if we got Porzingis for Kemba Walker. I don't think it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised just because obviously there's a lot of tension between Doncic and Porzingis, and if you're the Mavs, your number one goal is to keep Luka Doncic happy. So if they do trade Porzingis for Kemba, I think that's a that's definitely a good deal for OKC. I'm not sure Kemba's fit with Luka overall on the team. It's not bad because it does give them somebody else who can create their own shot and all that. But I just feel like if they are going to trade Porzingis, I wouldn't be surprised if they go for somebody either more up and coming who's young or if they go for like another big because I feel like they're going to have a massive hole in the middle if they get rid of it. Yeah, but no one's going to want to absorb that contract. And especially with this price, how it is, I don't believe the Thunder are going to be uh, asking for a bunch of things to kind of absorb that Porzingis contract. I think they kind of like the player. And so I think this is the best move for the Mavs because they get rid of a big contract they don't like, and they don't have to give up a bunch of picks and players to kind of attach to to get rid of it. Yeah, no, I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bad trade, I definitely don't think. I can see it from both sides. I don't think it's going to happen, but if it does happen, I I wouldn't be mad about it at all. Uh, my last trade uh, for that we came up with is kind of out there. I didn't go with anybody who, like we talked about in the Deal or No Deal, I want to spice it up a little bit. So the Pacers, okay. they There's been rumors about them blowing it up since the trade deadline because they kind of don't look like they're going anywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if like Miles Turner and a couple other other players get traded. But mine's going to be Malcolm Brogdon to the Lakers for Kyle Kuzma and their 2020 and their 22nd pick this year and either another first round pick or THT. Well, they are they allowed to trade pick number 26 because they traded their first well, next year and the first last year. Yeah, so basically what would happen would be that they would basically call the Pacers. They'd agree to the deal in principle and then they just draft uh, whoever draft the Pacers the want and yeah, then yeah, trade them away. So I kind of like this trade because obviously Dennis Schroeder, I don't know if he's going to re-sign with the Lakers. Probably not he if he turned down their massive extension earlier this well, dude, season. He's, he's worth 100 mil easily I guess now so. after so that playoff appearance. So he's going to have to go somewhere else. He's going to pay him that much money. And I think Malcolm Brogdon's an upgrade over Dennis Schroeder for the Lakers because Dennis Schroeder is good, especially as like a one-on-one -on -one kind of player. But I think Malcolm Brogdon is better at creating shots for other people. And that's kind of what the Lakers need, especially – if they don't know how available LeBron and AD are going to be throughout the regular season, because obviously AD's injured a lot, and they're going to have to start resting LeBron some as he gets older. And Malcolm Brogdon is also a knockdown shooter. He shot 38% from three this year. And I just think overall he's he's an upgrade over Dennis Schroeder, and I think the Pacers are going to try to blow it up. So they're going to want yeah. like Kyle Kuzma, THT, well, if just some young players. If you're the Lakers, would you rather have Kemba Walker or Malcolm Brogdon? I'd rather have Malcolm Brogdon. I think Malcolm Brogdon's better than Kemba Walker. Really? Yeah. Well, do you think they'll also be willing to attach THT to that? Because they love THT. They do love THT. I don't know why they love THT too, so much. I'm not going to lie. I think he's they good. Didn't, they didn't even plan that much in yeah, the exactly. playoffs. Yeah, exactly. I just think that LeBron loves THT, to be honest. Yeah. And he well, just hey, must be a fun guy to be around. Hey, bro, would you rather want THT or uh, what's his name? Uh, the dude from uh, Shabazz Napier. That's who it was. That was great. That was when, the worst When LeBron was like, I want to leave if we get Shabazz because he's like the best player in the draft. And then he left, obviously. But uh, that wraps it up. Another episode of Game Ball.